Hello, and thanks for coming along to And We Have an Office Dog, the digital agency podcast where we talk to agency owner directors and learn more about what makes them tick. From the things that make them similar to the things they'd rather have known sooner, where they've had success, and where they've learned some hard lessons. All will be revealed with your host, Chris Simmons, the agency coach, and he'll be talking to a different awesome agency person in each episode, asking them four questions and seeing where the conversation takes us over the next 25 minutes. Okay, so let us begin. Over to you, Chris. Thanks, voiceover guy. And on the podcast today, we've got a special podcast because this is the first one that we've recorded with both founders of an agency. So I'd like to say hello to Jure and to Fabio, the founders of Viaduct Gen, uh, Viaduct Gen, Viaduct Generation. Oh, I've done it wrong, haven't I? What's your brand name? <laughs> Viaduct Generation. There uh, we go. But the URL is viaductgen.com. That's, See that? I'm plugging I'm, away I'm, off the I'm, off the back. I'm, I'm on your site. That's why I said Viaduct Gen. Yeah, see. yeah, we'll use that. We'll use that. Hello, so Chris. welcome to the podcast, both of you. So um, as with all podcasts, uh, this is just a nice conversation. We're going to be talking about your agency and the things you've learned. But first and foremost, tell us who you are, uh, what your agency does. Tell us a little bit of the history of, of how that all came together. And we'll see what the hell happens, because this is the first time two people have tried to answer questions. Go. <laughs> um, well, we are Viaduct Generation, a an independent SEO agency um, aiming to represent uh, underrepresented founders. You know, uh, so um, we are a eighteen months old now, Dre, if I'm right. Yeah, yeah about eighteen months. Yeah, um, we started this um, back in 2020. Actually, that's when the idea came about. Uh, fun fact, Chris, that, you, that we didn't mention to you oh, before. Um, it, it was actually we actually had two other founders as well. And did uh, you like absorb them in, like yeah. like a, a like a when you absorb a twin in a pregnancy? Pre- precisely. So I ate one, and Dre ate the other one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, nah, it, it's um, t- also two guys who grew up with us, and we went to like more or less the same school as them. Um, but what had what happened was they they just had different interests in in life. Uh, they were less SEO lovers and more creative lovers. One ended up being a DJ, and the other ones just went back to arts and cryptos. From from what I can see on on socials. Um, but yeah, all of this came about um, during the social sort of unrest uh, that was happening in 2020 after the unfortunate murder of uh, George Floyd. Um, and we all sort of just came together and thought about a way to help, um, yeah, underrepresented communities, really. Um, then a few months later, uh, uh, my previous business partner and I were presenting the idea to Deray because uh, I always loved Deray's opinion. Um, this is all before we launched. We just presented the idea to Deray. We had the a slide deck of about a hundred slides. <laughs> um, and um, Dre gave us really good feedback. And in that moment, something clicked in my mind. I was like, mm, I think I want Dre on my side, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you're living with that mistake for the rest uh, of time now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's a nice, pleasant mistake, I have yeah. to say. <laughs> and and what, what's what's your feeling on on that, Dure? How, 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 you know, you, you so you weren't there on day one, but you were there pretty much from day two, in a sense. Yeah, mm, yeah like uh, absolutely. I think I referred to the the two previous um, co-founders as almost like the godfathers of Viaduct Generation. They birthed it. They were the the the, the brainchild of it. And it, I think Viaduct Generation had a few different like iterations to what it is today and and that's with a lot of businesses right we all think oh, yeah. we're doing this and we pivot and we change um but yeah fabio's uh put that exactly right they came to he came to me with a, a massive slide deck i gave really honest i said all right mm-hmm. gents i'm going to give you some feedback here uh, and it was i think pretty critical but i think fabio was like that's the kind of critical analysis i want on my side um and i think that's where fabio and i work quite well in that yin and yang right he will say mm-hmm. something 
I'll say I disagree and this is why and vice versa. Seldom are we nodding and going, yeah, we completely agree. Let's definitely do that. It is compromise and I think we work quite well together in that regard. Absolutely. So 18 months, it's not a long time, but in agency world, it is a long time. I've, I, you know, you've, you've got, uh, uh, what, 15 in the team, I think now you said. Yeah. Um, I, I, in fact, I met them. They're all wonderful people. Uh, but in 18 months to get to, you know, 15, 15 in the team with, with a, uh, a nice repeating recurring revenue, um, that's not easy. So what's the what's the biggest success that you've had beyond getting to, you know, to, to 15 people at that point? What, what's the biggest success you've seen in the last 18 months? Ray? Um, I think I think Brighton SEO, the last one that we went to, was a, yep. a changing point for us. Okay. Um, the previous one, we had two people, uh, myself and our head of content, Danny. We went over and we we tried to meet a few people, but we ended up at the end of the day being super tired because we're learning so much and we had a few drinks and whatever it is. But this time we rolled deep. We rolled with 10 people. We were all wearing merch. Everyone could spot us. We were at the on like at karaoke night and we produced a lovely video and summaries of Brighton SEO. But I don't think there's a single person that went to Brighton SEO that goes, fired up Jen who? Like people know who we are now. Yeah. Um, and that's really exciting. And I think um, I think uh, that is just a, a really good reflection of the hard work that everyone has been um, to, to getting VG to where it is today. So it, in, in that sense, then, um, you, the, a big success was what, bringing the team together in one place or being bringing you know, that, that. I remember when when I took all my team to, to Brighton a few times and a few other events, it it felt pretty good because you know you you got you you've got your tribe with you and it's quite cool but other people notice it right mm, and yeah and 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 i know how difficult it is to to hire in this uh in this industry at the minute uh, and and you said to me the other day uh in particular you said you know this was this was a uh, um a really good uh event because people were actually coming up to you and asking i got any jobs <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think that's that's the that's what culture does right like if you can create an environment that looks attractive but actually also when they drill down and they see that the policies that we have in place in that Mm -hmm. we know seo is just seo at the end of the day yes it's really important and we we do a lot for our clients and Mm -hmm. why we do what we do is so important but um i think like we have a really strong policy on putting purpose over profit um Mm -hmm and why we do what we do is so integral and that needs to reflect in in our tribe as well so we make sure we have a lot of policies to support mental health we have duvet days if someone is mentally ill we have menstrual health days to support the females in our organization um we operate on a really flexible start time we try and make things that are really gonna Mm. like leave like people will go to work and be like yeah i feel fulfilled i feel like i'm making a difference and I'm not mentally burnt out because I'm ranking on position eight rather than position three. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I think uh, I think having having the right mix there is is important. And and you don't have to follow the follow the, the 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 list of all of the other benefits in order to have that. You've got to hire the right people with the right values for mm-hmm. first and foremost. Because then then you know when there is a bad day, everyone kind of knows you can trust each other. With a oh shit, I've had a really bad day today, and someone will, someone will back you up or take on some work for you or do something to help you. Um, mm-hmm. And if you you know hire with values first and purpose in mind uh, then you know you're going to have a, a a good bunch of people the trouble is uh maintaining that kind of cohesion and clarity at a larger scale mm. you know get to 30 people and you really need to like make sure that you're hiring based on values hire on values train them up to the to the processes and and keep keep at it keep clarity keep keep that vision really really clear with people yeah so so if you could go back then if you uh i'm gonna i want both of you to answer this individually so if you could go back fabio um 18 months so say two years if you go back two years and you sitting there thinking about starting the agency off and the fabio from now pops in to the past and says hey fabio it's me fabio um, <laughs> i've got some advice for you what advice would that be two years ago um Get Dre on the team quicker, <laughs> you know. And, oh, and, come and, on, and, just because nah, he's here. Nah, it's, it's actually, it's actually not. It's almost like um, 
I'm a dreamer, right? I'm someone that has got very big ambitions mm. um, for for the business, for for myself personally, in my own personal life. Um, what Dre did was not only help me with like for, like almost carry the idea forward. It was almost like a uh, he forced us to come out of the ideation stage and go into the action stage, you yeah. know? So, yeah. and, and that, uh, the speed in which he helped us get to that, I wish we could have done it a little bit sooner because mm -hmm. right now I think we'd be looking at a, at a much bigger organization really, you know? So to, if we're talking about two years ago and not, 18 months ago i would say i would say that is the is the fact that we actually did spend a lot of months we're talking from uh, april may uh, all the way till january sort of ideating everything and trying to cover every single angle of everything or oh, our marketing needs to look like this our culture needs to look like this our uh, ideal clients need to be this mm -hmm. everything to the t we had planned and it was almost like why didn't we just go out and get businesses instantly, yeah. you know, when we yeah. had that expertise ready? You know, you, so, you know, they say uh, like done is better than perfect in terms of just getting something done. I, 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 I edited that ever so slightly and I say done is better than perfect, but done better be <laughs> bloody good. <laughs> yeah. 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 So if you're going to if, you, if you're going to start, you don't go to the nth degree planning and planning and planning because no strategy survives first contact with the enemy you know, the second you go live it's gonna have to change it's true uh but you do need to plan something to have have something to to work with Absolutely. but done is better than perfect yeah. and that seems to be what you know getting Jure in has helped with so now Jure, if you can let your ego aside after hearing that lovely bit of feedback <laughs> what would you do going back in time yeah, I'm going to fall off my chair. Fabio, that's very kind of you. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I think one thing that I would do differently myself, um, I would, uh, two years ago, I would have probably, I think, gone all in from the outset. Like I was, I was studying this, uh, I was studying university while starting Viaduct Generation. Mm -hmm. I was working a part-time job as well. So Viaduct Generation, as Fabio says, yeah, we were, we pushed into, into from almost a hobby and a good slide deck and a good idea yeah. into actually execution. Hey guys, we're losing 4,000 pounds a month, by the way, because we don't have clients, like mm -hmm. whatever it is. Right. Um, so I think it would have been probably like go all in, do what you mm -hmm. can to do to to put the next six months aside, whether it would have been pause my degree or don't know what, but looking at what we've built here, it is really something that I, I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm, I'm really happy. I love coming into work. I love working with great people. And I just wish, uh, I wish we could have uh, done it with more velocity from the, from the start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so, so in a sense, you wanted a lot, you, you would give yourself advice to go, go, go hard, go, go, go. And, yeah. and, and Fabio would have given himself the advice of bring you in sooner so that you could go hard and go, 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 which sounds mm -hmm. brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Right. Like, I think I think maybe that's a little bit it's an easy answer to just say, oh, I would have gone quicker, gone faster. Mm -hmm. Re reality is you don't know that reality is you you don't know what's behind the corner. But um, reflecting back and it could have been different if we had gone that maybe we, things wouldn't have panned out as well as they are now. But looking at looking at the way things are going, I'm. I'm delighted and I'm 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 really proud to to be part of this amazing company. So, yeah, um, I would have said go in, go full, all in, all chips on the table, and and make it happen sooner than you think. So, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, it's hindsight's brilliant, isn't it? When you look at it like that, and, <laughs> yeah. and you can say, you know, it looks really good now, and it could have been better if we'd have done and we'd have tried and we'd have this and that. Um, but but this this is this is the beauty of, of agency, isn't it? That you you now know that. So when an opportunity presents itself in the future, the the lesson you've learned should mean that you take your own sort of a hindsight advice and go, right, okay, guys, we're now gonna offer this or we're gonna do that or we wanna scale to double the size. Let's do it in this way and go, 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 yeah. go, go. We've got to be bold. Yeah. We have to because if if we can't do it, who else? Right. <laughs> now, Fabio and I and the team and the people that are the tribe that make up Viaduct Generation, we now have full confidence that we can execute on everything. We can go out and 
bloody to the moon, right? Like, let's do it. Yes. But before me and Fabio working on our beds, we were like with like a couple of thousands in the bank account of our own personal savings. Like that was it. So we were trying to like, OK, can we afford this 200 pound, 300 pound investment? And now it's like, well, let's go. Like, let's try it. Let's fail. Let's move forward. Let's learn from it. Um, but now we are unapologetically bold. Yeah. But I think we could have been bolder and braver from the outset. I, I, absolutely, and I think I think it's a um, it's it's really hard these days with digital agencies in particular because realistically, it's a formula business, isn't it? People go in, clients go in, deliverables come out. There is only a certain amount of what good looks like, and the majority of clients don't know what that is either. So to be bold, that really has to be. Uh, that has to be something that is um, uh, mostly about branding in a sense, you know, because the client's not going to know the difference between you and another agency beyond branding, yep. uh, beyond results. And, you know, you can get all of the awards that you want and you can get all of the case studies and things like that. That's great. That's it's really going to gonna bolster you. But being everywhere all the time and having that surface area covered from a, a branding and a marketing point of view, that's where you're going to get that 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 push, that drive, and that's going to take money and time and effort. And if you really want to, you know, grow with people or you want to grow with um, with revenue or whatever, you've just you you you've got to be bold, like you say, focus on it, push, push and push. It's um, it's it, it's 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 quite important, I think, to kind of reconcile that because you, like I, I, I used to do it when I was running the agencies. I used to look on Twitter or LinkedIn and see this agency, look, there's 50 of them and they've just won another award and another award and there's this and there's that. And you think, why aren't I doing that? And then you start thinking, well, actually, that's not why I'm here. It's yeah. not what I'm for. My, uh, my, my measure of success is something slightly different. Uh, or I want to grow to this which requires 50 people but 50 people isn't the measure of success those people posting that their measure of success may not be 50 people and multiple awards but to get the biggest clients with the biggest revenue they need 50 people delivering this amount of services and they need the awards it's just a byproduct of that of being out there to prove that you've got that um so you know try <laughs> trying to look at it objectively is quite hard it is um, so if you know in in the last 18 months there's been there's been a lot of success there's been a lot of very very quick growth as well is there something that you kind of regret doing that you if with hindsight would never have done or re kind of wish you hadn't done in the way you've done it yeah um there are a few things absolutely absolutely i'll give you i'll give you a couple of examples mm -hmm. um at the start we were very much um we we signed a contract i'm not going to mention names but we signed a contract with a, a well-known uh a seo platform which sort of and that we we did that like prior to having clients you know because mm -hmm. we 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 felt like we needed to have like something backing our services when speaking to future clients or when doing research to approach mm -hmm. prospects um However, we had no clients, right? And we, we invoices were coming. Um, I do believe that that was a little bit of a stressful position to put us in from the very start. Um, but perhaps you also did add that element of we have to go out and get clients, otherwise we can't pay this and we are in trouble. Yeah, <laughs> you it, know, it, it lit a fire that you yeah. only be satisfied by clients. But, exactly. Yeah, the the fear of of uh, cash flow is is stark early doors isn't it absolutely um, uh, and it's it's you know, it's tough it's terrifying to sort of see the cash going out but not being at least topped back up yeah. um and but you you you, you know they you you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs all the other <laughs> all the other turns of phrase you can't you, you you know you just you can't grow without spending and yeah. you can't get clients without something in the background that is either driving you or is is part of your tool set yeah. um so so it, 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 the lesson you learned from that is what what what's the the kind of key thing that you took away from that um i would say don't commit to a contract if you can't afford to pay it for the 12 months that you sign for it you there, know? You go, there you go guys there's the advice everyone on the internet everyone in the world needs to have heard that advice because... <laughs> honestly it's um it, it was a stressful uh, situation but hey we we managed to come out nicely and now we are one of their biggest clients so you know things have changed um that's, that's and, th good. and then just one more thing um 
at the very start, we had a clear mission and we had a clear understanding of the sort of clients that we should have gone for. Um, because we needed that cash to pay for these bills that we're talking about. Our first ever client was someone that was so far away from who we now would have as a client that it's um and that sort of client only lasted with us two months. And as a matter of fact, is one of the only clients that has le that left us from the time that we've been an agency. So yeah. that is another thing I would change is the we perhaps could have been a little bit more patient on that one because yes he helped for two months but after two months they cancelled and it was it was sad because i don't know i've got a big ego i feel like most seos do have a big oh, yeah. ego uh, <laughs> most agencies as well so um i don't really like the word cancellation um mm. but unfortunately on that one i do have to admit that the client did cancel and it was because we weren't aligned in anyways you know mm. after three weeks he was calling Dre's phone 10 times a day oh why am I not seeing more traffic on my site you know um there was it, it, yeah it, we weren't aligned at all um so yeah that's another one if it doesn't make sense to, for your agency don't take them on just because of the money yeah absolutely yeah. And, and what about you Jerry is there something that you, you know you kind of regret having done or wish you'd have done sooner or something like that um yeah I I'm a bit of a romantist. I'm a, I'm a lover at heart. I wrote my uh, dissertation, 10th, not dissertation, like what's that dissertation you do in A-levels? Like the, uh, like something I project. Know. I never showed extended, up. I think it's called extended project, right? Mm -hmm. Where you have to write like a little dissertation. I did it on like love. Is it like a, a box of emotions, whatever, right? I'm a lover, not a fighter. But <laughs> Valentine's Day came around this year and I was like, <laughs> wow. This is such a great opportunity for us to be creative and to showcase that we're a little bit different. And I have a, an amazing writer in my team. Her name's Harriet. Okay. She put together this amazing I'm poem. That was this. Perfect. And we thought, you know what? We'll be different because we're an SEO agency and we'll do it via like a, a direct mail uh, campaign. So we found 5,000 businesses. We found the right people to speak to. And we sent him this poem, which was, what was it, Fafaya? It was like, roses are red, violets are blue. Uh, how about a free website review? Yeah, what about a free, how about a free website? We're not great at poetry, how about a free website review? I've butchered that, sorry, Harriet, it was brilliant. And it had a QR code that people could scan and then go to our landing page. Yeah. We, we sent this out to 4,000 businesses, um, including postage, including data and everything else. It came to approximately a five thousand pound investment. Okay. We got one lead. <laughs> the data was so bad, yeah. we ended up like it ended up like not even <clears throat> arriving. Only like thirty people scanned the QR code, and it was the most expensive marketing uh, campaign we've ever run. And it was based on me being like, "I've got this great idea. Let's do it." <laughs> not leaving it to my head of marketing and my marketing mm -hmm. apprentices and marketing execs going hey guys what do you think about this how does this yeah. fit into your marketing calendar i was like no valentine's day is in two weeks let's do it now yeah and yeah that was an expensive I, mistake i can see that i think i think the lesson there is know your lane and see <laughs> your lane. Uh, and and you know jokes aside it's you know, it's a lot of money to spend to get essentially nothing in return but it's not necessarily nothing in return you never know they there's a there's you know there's there's brand building there's all sorts of things that come from it especially internally lessons and the lessons like i i always say that running an agency is the most expensive mba you'll ever have <laughs> you're like you're, you, you, all the lessons you make are, are, uh, are expensive. They're either, you know, jobs that have to go or clients have to go or, you know, nice fancy things in the office that have to go. You just can't do it all. So uh, making mistakes is is expensive, but it's it's worth it in a sense. You'll never do that again, I hope. Um, <laughs> Valentine's so, Day this year or next year coming, I'll leave to the marketing team and I will call and speak to the people who scan the QR code. But um, that's me for from a marketing side, as you say, I'm going to stay in my sales lane. Yep, that's 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 wise. Um, so 
if if people are listening to this podcast right now and they're they're thinking of starting an agency and they're or they're wanting to um you know they're they're either at an agency and they're thinking of starting it themselves or they have just started there a couple of weeks couple of months in um what one piece of advice would you give them uh, i'll go to jure first one piece of advice for someone starting an agency today yeah um, assuming it, they've asked you for advice you're not just unsolicited sure. sending them a letter in the post with a qr code that says here's the advice <laughs> um i would say drill down in a niche that you understand mm-hmm. um so particularly uh, great if it's a, a niche that is due to explode um whether it's crypto or web3 or it's a particular aspect that you have some experience in drill mm-hmm. down into that so that you are able to speak the customer language um, and fail fast, go for, build a, build yeah. something up that is like an MVP, like just what you need to get your clients through the door. So just build up a little bit of traction and nail that one industry, like go through it all. Start, pick your top 20 keywords that you, that you're, you know these clients would love to target and call everyone from page three to page 10 mm-hmm. and just, Get an understanding of if this is something that they can you can truly do i think there's a few ways in which you can do it i think some people take the freelancer to agency route once they get too busy then they become an agency um we chose to just go straight into to agency and, and fail fast a bit a bit but if i was to start uh, again i would say pick an agent pick a, a niche drill down into it so that you can speak the customer language and go out and speak to everyone and get 100 no's um, because after two, three months of doing that, you'll have a pretty good understanding if this is something that you can do forever. Yep, uh, it's fantastic advice. It really is. I think the the, the two parts of that, uh, three parts, I, I suppose, are just get on with it uh, uh, in a sense, get on with it and do it fast so that the mistakes are less painful, but you can keep going at a pace. Uh, then you've got in there, you know, pick a niche because you'll understand it and the people that you work with will understand it. And yep. And 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 I it's a repeating theme in quite a lot of the recordings that I've been doing where people have said pick a niche or uh, whether it be a niche in terms of a, a deliverable like just technical SEO or a niche in terms of a um, an industry niche like whatever it might be uh, whatever that whatever that um, niche is whether it's deliverable or, or or industry makes you the experts in it because that's all you live and breathe. And um, one thing which when, when I'm working with any agencies and, and they're always like, oh, we're just not getting enough leads in or we can convert every lead, but we're not getting enough in. Go out there, like you say, page three to 10, et cetera, call everyone up and 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 there's, the, you know, uh, 100 calls in 20 days. Just literally do these calls, smash them through every single day, five calls, 10 calls, 15 calls, keep going. And every time the phone gets put down, you know that that's a lesson you change the way you open the next call then when you get a no and it's a hard no or a, uh, you know when you're getting the commitment or when you're not getting the commitment and you know whether that's a niche within within 20 days you know if you if the niche is worth it or not absolutely yeah um, nailed. yeah and, and what about you fabio what's your one piece of advice for someone who's struggled all the way through this podcast to listen to us <laughs> um and i, I like the ray's advice because it's very much like um SEO focus, let's say, you know, um, almost more from the business side of things, I would say be consistent, you know, yeah. and, and be resilient, you know, like it's, um, there will be tough times, you know, like we, we've had tough times, you know, we've, we, mm. we've cried together, we, we've laughed <laughs> together, we've, you know, we've bled together almost, um, like it. it's really tough in that agency you know <laughs> it's only been 18 months um okay we haven't bled yet but okay. uh uh nah, yeah we've certainly cried together you know it's um the consistency is so important you know it's it's very important if you do decide to do it alongside a business partner just ensure that you do it with someone that you fully trust someone that you can that you know that if you're having a tough day they're picking picking up the phone themselves and doing the calls that the ray was just talking about you know um is yeah i would say be consistent honestly like be consistent in 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 the way you service your clients be consistent in the way you go out and um and 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 kick start your days for for the agency be consistent in your approach honestly yeah. for us consistency i think it has been the biggest key for us you know we've been consistent in the 
in, in the hunger. We've been consistent in the way we service clients, as I was just saying. Um, we've been consistent with our team and, and, and the values we present. We've been consistent with our partners and the charities that we serve. So I think consistency is key for, for any agency, I would say, but especially for, for business in general. So yeah, I would say that Absolutely. the piece of advice is consistency. Yeah, so if you start something, keep doing it unless you know it's definitely not the thing to do <laughs> and then and then change it but yeah. but uh but being consistent i think consistency follows in terms of d- the values and the purpose as well so you know you can change niche a bit you can uh change change a few uh aspects of how you do the deliverables a bit you can fail fast in that regard mm-hmm. but sticking to the reason why you get out of bed in the morning why you started the agency off is is key and then consistency as you grow is essential Absolutely. so quick fire question for you fabio Best thing about Duray as a business partner? There's a few. Um, Go on, just one. Pick. Confidence. Duray, best thing about Fabio as a business partner? He is one of the most ambitious people I've ever met. Brilliant. Uh, Fabio, worst thing about Duray as a business partner? He's too strict sometimes. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's the South African in him. Uh, Duray. Back to you, worst thing about uh, Fabio as a business partner? He's really bad at taking pictures of receipts. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the strictness. <laughs> yep, okay. No wrong. No wrong. I can see which one of you two are the visionary and which one of you two are the implementer when it comes to the business. Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's a, that's a fantastic way to end the podcast. So thanks very much for coming along, both of you. It's been really good to have you. Thank you for having us. Honestly, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, look forward to working with you in the future. Yeah, awesome. Um, and in our next podcast, we'll have a different agency leader hearing about the things they've learned and some of the lessons that they've taken from it. Thanks very much for listening.